Well, I spent three months going to church, praying, worship, doing worship songs, and, and asking God to reveal himself to me. But if you're a Christian, pay really close attention to the qualifiers and the setups and the way that apologists word things. What do you tell an atheist who says he looked for God and God didn't reveal himself to him? And generally, what do you make of the argument of non-resistant non-believers? I'm a little torn on it. On one end, I want to affirm. All right, look, dude, there's a lot of things that I wish didn't exist, like war and poverty and malaria. But I believe they exist because there's a lot of evidence. So the thing is, this non-resistant thing is bullshit non-resistant look i i wish there wasn't a war in two wars going on in europe and and all the other shit that happens i wish there wasn't racism and bigotry and hatred but but i believe these things exist because the evidence is overwhelming the evidence is overwhelming that a lot of children die of childhood diseases whether it's dysentery, malaria, or even in the first world with great medical treatment, a lot of kids die of child cancers. I mean, maybe not tens of millions like they do with malaria, but you get my point. So this whole thing, it, it's already a setup. It's already a setup. If you're a Christian, pay really close attention to the qualifiers and the setups and the way that apologists word things so that they can then sneak in something sneaky. On the other end, I want to affirm that scripture tells me that men are without excuse. Romans 1, it says, you know, that God's attributes are clearly seen by creation. You can look around at creation and see his attributes. So people are without excuse if they don't believe in God. Okay. Those scriptures were written before quantum physics was even something people could imagine. People had no idea back then about the the nature of physics, how big the universe was, about the Big Bang, about all of the things now that we know that are evidences that naturalism is, I don't want to say it's true absolutely, I don't want to say that, but it, but there's very strong evidence for it. So when Mike says the Bible says you're without excuse, first of all, that's circular reasoning. If you can't determine that there is a God without any religious text, then of course you're stuck always listening to whether it's a Christian or a Muslim or a, a Hindu saying, well, it was my God that did all this. And most Christians will admit, even after they explain the Kalam cosmological argument, that, well, that just gets us to a creator God, and then we still need to do the work to get to Christianity. Okay, fine, but we don't need there to be a God. And guess what, Christian? You should be happy about this. So this is... <coughs> <coughs> okay, I had a coughing fit because... God's angels came. So I have to hold on a second. In the name of Satan, be gone, angels. Stop your harassment. Okay, got rid of the angels. It's a neutral zone now. Um, if you're a Christian, you should be extremely happy when science proves beyond any reasonable doubt that naturalism could be true in the solution. And why is that? Well, because the Bible rewards faith. Remember Jesus' words to Thomas, blessed are those who believe without seeing. In other words, without evidence, they're blessed. The people that believe without evidence are blessed. Jesus told that after Thomas touched the wounds, right? So when Mike Winger talks about it's, you know, oh, it's obvious. The Bible says you're without excuse because it's obvious that the world was made by a God. He's reflecting words from, from a really, really long time ago. 
even in the days of Thomas Paine, who wrote Age of Reason, he believed in a creator God. Now, he was a deist, so he didn't believe in Christianity. He thought Christianity was evil, and he had many reasons. If you have not read Age of Reason, I recommend it. So that, you know, that was, I don't know, a little over 200 years ago, around the time of the American Revolution. Since that time till now, so if, if Thomas Paine lived today, he would likely be an atheist because he wouldn't need to say, oh, it's obvious that there is a creator God. Now, again, be happy about this, Christian. In fact, I highly recommend you read Max Tegmark and Victor Stinger and and Lawrence Krauss and listen listen to Sean Carroll. He's, he's a great guy to listen to, but also read his books or study quantum physics, study why naturalists and why atheists like myself don't believe uh, that a God is necessary, because that will increase your faith. If you can still believe in God in spite of all the evidence that we don't need a God, God will reward you. God will, God will, I mean, if you take Jesus at his word, you'll be more blessed. So I don't, so I don't understand what this thing is about trying to deny the obvious. It's like Christians some years ago that denied evolution and said evolution's from Satan. And then, you know, eventually they get worn down and they realize, okay, we sound like ignoramuses if we keep saying evolution's false. So we believe evolution's true, but that's a method that God used, right? So fine. Like move to that place, study some quantum physics and quit saying silly things. How do I affirm the sincerity and genuineness of individuals at the same time, be honest about the fact that they should believe in God? And when I say quit saying silly things, I mean like the thing Mike just said, that people should believe in God. Don't should on me, Mike. Don't should on anybody. People shouldn't just believe anything. It's very easy as a human being to be deceived. In fact, we all agree that most people that believe in religion are deceived at least in some level because you all disagree on everything. And remember, about 70% of the world rejects Christian claims that Jesus rose from the dead and that he's the God of the universe and the creator. Like some of those religions believe God was, or Jesus was a prophet, but not God. And of course, there's all kinds of different beliefs. So when Mike says people should believe in God, he's dehumanizing people, he's insulting people, and he's not appealing to fair reason logic, evidence, and thought, because nobody should just believe anything. You should use the mind. If you believe God gave you a mind, use your mind in critical thinking. And from, from our position as atheists, we think the mind evolved to be able to do these things. But in either case, we both agree that we have a mind that's pretty, pretty amazing, but it's very susceptible to being deceived and it's very susceptible to believing things without evidence or, you know, for various reasons, because we were raised that way or we were um, subjected to something that conditioned our mind to believe stuff. This is why there's big arguments in politics and religion and why there's a lot of silly beliefs about things like vaccines and climate change. And, you know, whatever you believe on all of those things, just keep in mind that other genuine decent people believe the opposite whether it's believing the beliefs about jesus or you know like even people that believe that you know anti-vaxxers like i think they're a little bit crazy but but i try to have compassion for the idea that something conditioned their mind to accept to accept nonsensical claims without studying and without reason because you know like Saying that this whole universe needed a God to make it come into existence and, or saying that whole universe came into existence, you know, like without a creator, both of those statements on their face seem ridiculous, right? Because like to think that there's some big giant magical being that could just speak words and make things appear is a ridiculous claim. Let's be honest. And I also admit, I'll, I'll admit with you theists. Saying that all of this happened, the eyeball and planets and stars happened naturalistically without 
some creator. That's a that's an insane, ridiculous claim. I'm right there with you. It's it's nuts. And if you just make the claim and then accept it, you're not using your brain. Is that fair? Is that fair to ask people to think and to be able to steel man the other side and to understand the other side? I certainly understand Christianity. I lived it for 38 years. Well, I think I just affirm both. I go, look, I don't doubt your sincerity. I do, however, think that you should see God in creation. You genuinely don't. But that may be a result of a blindness that's on your heart. Yeah, Mike, I, you know, I think you're a genuine seeker and you're a good guy. But the reason you accept Christianity is because there's a blindness on your heart, Mike, because you haven't really sought Allah. Now, the existence of Allah in the Quran is obvious. I, I, let me play a couple clips here to prove my point. Now, 5,778 Kelvin is exactly, exactly the average surface temperature in Kelvin of the sun, of our sun. This is the average surface temperature. And it's the number of verses between the first and last time the sun is mentioned in the Quran. Did what did they did they set that up? Did they know? Did they have their telescopes and their inter you know their thermometers that worked across space, their infrared uh measuring devices? No, absolutely not. This is the most obvious the Quran is the most obvious thing from God that I have ever seen in my life. It is literally it's a book of miracles that we've been sent as a mercy from our Lord. That's just what it is. Right? So now, that is very offensive to people. I realize that. A lot of uh, non-believers would be like, so, okay, so I'm, blind, I'm spiritually blind is what you're saying. Um, I know this is offensive to a lot of you Christians, and I know uh, somebody, maybe somebody can send this to Mike Winger. I know it's offensive to you, Mike Winger. But you're, you're – and I, you know, I know I'm saying you're spiritually blind. But it's obvious. It's – look what he just proved in the Quran. If you take the first mention of the of the sun, you know, the – that giant star that is in the solar system that we, our planet goes around and you, and you go to this next verse and to take the number of verses in between, it's, it's exactly the Kelvin temperature of the surface of the sun. Now, how could you deny that? It's obvious the Quran came from Allah who created the universe. It's obvious. So Mike, it's because you haven't sought truth. Because your heart is hardened against the truth, you reject Allah and you reject his prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Why is that, Mike? Why are you so stubborn? Yes, there's yes, there's an aspect of your your awareness of the realities around you that is not right. I, if if you want to follow God, right, the first thing you need to do is to take this brain that he gave you, right? We're all in agreement that we were created, right? You'd be arrogant to suggest otherwise, right? You take this brain that he gave you. Yeah, okay. So this guy just sounds like Mike Winger on that. It's, it's, you're just arrogant if you don't accept my story that God made the world. No, guys. You're arrogant if you say that you know your holy book is the right book. And if you just ask God, he'll reveal it. Or if you just study and use critical thinking, it'll prove my religion's the right religion. Let's be honest here. Is it possible that one of these religious claims is true? Sure, it's possible. Is it possible they're all true? No. Is it possible that genuine, otherwise smart people completely disagree with each other because they take into the argument some presuppositions or emotional arguments or other nonsense? Well, yeah, that's obviously what happens. And you all agree with me on that if, if you're a theist. You agree with me that the other guy's wrong. So what I'm asking you to do is use your critical thinking mind, whether it's from evolution or whether it's from God or whether it's from both. doesn't matter. You can use good methodologies to find out the answers to some questions that aren't absolutely certain, but we can get it. We can narrow it down.
And get if you do that, guess what? If you're honest, you will at least have to admit that naturalism is a possibility. I'm not I'm not asking you to accept it as being absolutely true. I'm not even accepting you to believe that it is true. I'm asking you to accept that it's possible. Just like I would just like you ask me to accept Christianity is possible or or you know Islam is possible or of all forms of worship this worship to Shri Krishna or Vishnu is topmost because he's supreme lord and Krishna he mentions in the Bhagavad Gita matta parataram nanyat kinji dasti dhananjaya mai sarvam idam protam sutre manigana iva Brahma says Krishna is God Lord Shiva says Krishna is God Indra says Krishna is God Varuna says Krishna is God Agni says Krishna is God and Krishna says yes I am God don't you know my friends the Muslims are slightly confused and so are the Christians for we have the words written down ancient words that tell us very much that Krishna is God and Brahma says Krishna is God and the universe testifies to the fact that Krishna is God If you are stubborn and your heart is very hard, like this man Mike Winger. Mike Winger, may I speak to you, my friend? Mike Winger, if you will only open your heart and you will look for truth, you will find that Krishna is God. For it is obvious the universe is held together by Krishna. Krishna is my Lord. He speaks to me and he will speak to you, my friend. So you see, and look, I'm... I hope nobody is offended by me by me doing my Nasa Pima Petalon voice from The Simpsons. Today we have a special on the Slurpees and the 7-Eleven across the street has a very higher price than me. I look, I I I love look, I, I, I don't mean any offense. I love I love the Indian accent. I really do. I especially love when there's a little bit of English accent mixed in with it. And so, if you go into any colleges or school, no one speaks English, Hindi at all. It's everything related to English itself. So, by the way, Indian English does have a particular accent. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think it does. It's actually proper English. So it's This... not accent. It's it's proper English. Simple. <laughs> I think our accent is better than theirs because uh, they. I think they are like. Not that good. It looks like they're spitting. Well, I think. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not offensive. It looks like they're spitting. And I think our accent is better. Yeah. Let's let's be honest with each other. There's proper English, and there's improper English. Proper English that God meant humans to use is very obvious. If you just pray and ask Jesus, you ask the Holy Spirit to fall on you, you will talk with the proper language. And I know I had a cousin who one time spoke in a tongues, and there was an Indian gentleman in the back row. And the Indian gentleman said, praise Jesus. Now, he converted from Hinduism to Christianity because he heard the gospel in his own native language, which was a small remote village in the south of India. So, um, quick side note about about my, my, my mother's search when I was a child, my mom's search for religion. She actually spent time talking to Jehovah's Witnesses and other people. And one of the people that she talked to were the, were the Hare Krishnas on Maui. And she took us to an event on one weekend where, you know, there was people like with blue makeup and fancy clothes dancing around and eating vegetarian and blah, blah, blah. So, for example, in my life, in this recent chapter over the last year or two, I have been drawn more and more towards Krishna. And I firmly believe that is uh, Ganesha who's taking me over there to say that this is something that you have to learn. And you have to understand it and you have to deeply respect it. And you have to go into depths to understand the meaning in your life. You can't say that a billion some Hindus and a billion some Muslims, I, I know the num I'm just using rough numbers, that there are all these wicked, horrible, stupid people. Because they're not. By and large... Your average Christian, your average Hindu, your average Muslim isn't some evil, monstrous person who who's sold their soul to, to Satan. Then there's really only one thing you need to do is you just need to say, you know, 
you need to believe and say there is one God and Muhammad, right? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the guy who brought this message, right? The Quran, that he is one of his messengers. And that's it. And you'll be on the truth at that point. Or of course, you think I'm blind too. You think I'm blind to how genuine and, and sincere and um, non-blind you are. And so it's not like we're off to a different base. What's happening in this discussion though is we're moving the discussion away from God's actual existence onto a focus of the sincerity and the genuineness and the goodness of this person across from me who's like, I'm looking for God and I'm not seeing him. There are even people who go further and they're like, I want to know God. I want to believe in God. I'm looking and searching and searching. But there are other sources of blindness that are not always internal. They can be somewhat external as well. Um, and so what I mean here is um, a person can have a blindness like like the like the ketchup bottle thing. You open the fridge and you can't find it. It's right there, but I just can't see it. Something's wrong with me. I don't see it. That can be the case with my search for God. I may have a blindness that I'm a bias, a blindness, wrong thinking. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, you might have a blindness or a bias. You think? Here's the problem here. Mike Winger and apologists tend to do this all the time. They project this out on everyone else, but not themselves. Now, what do you think of that, silly dog? There, now, there was somebody at one time in, in the world that thought it was a good idea to breed chihuahuas, one of the most obnoxious dogs in the planet with the uh, Dachshund or German, what they call salchichas. Salchicha means hot dog, uh, salchicha dog. So I love Silly. He's my favorite dog in the planet and uh, he's a little bit messed up. So when they breed these dogs, they, they end up with this often, this, this genetic defect of this arch back. And Silly Dog, when he walks, he falls over that's why his name's Silly Dog, because he's silly. Come on, come on, my goofy boy. Come on. You can do it. There you go. Hungry? You want breakfast? You want breakfast? Yeah, I love you. She's, she's one of three regular chihuahuas. She's actually the daughter of our two older chihuahuas, Barbie and Toby. And so what is my point here? My point is, is that people people mix in, com in combination things, and sometimes the result is good, and sometimes the result is bad. So, as much as I love, as as much as I love Silly Dog, I don't think that those genetic mixes ever should have been done. I, it, quite frankly, Silly Dog is the most obnoxious freaking dog on the planet. Um, but I love I I love him and. We have a special relation. He sleeps with me and my girlfriend every night, and he's treated like a prince, even though he's obnoxious. Things become important to people based on their taste and based on their culture and based on the, the effect that they're trying to accomplish. So when you listen, when you listen to that well-meaning Muslim who's, you know, speaking like in an American accent, looks, you know, looks like a pretty much like a white American guy. And he's, he's talking about how the Quran is obviously this uncreated gift from Allah. And, you know, you can, you could go back and listen to that video. It's like 45 minute long video proving, proving beyond any doubt that Allah is God and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger. And that any true seeker will figure this out. Any true logical, critical thinker will land on on uh, becoming a Muslim. I keep running into the same evidence and I, I disbelieve it for a bad reason. But I don't see that as a bad reason. I think I'm just being clever and wise and smart. But there's also an external blindness. Satan has is a deceiver who deceives the world. Now, deceiving the world implies that there's something external there that's bringing a blindness onto people's lives. Brother Mahesh has asked a question that how confident is Islam that it's not deceived by Satan and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not crucified. And anyone who submits his will to God, he's a Muslim. So Quran is very explicit, confident 
without a single doubt that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not killed, neither was he crucified. It was only made to appear so. I am 100% confident because Quran says that. But to make you also confident, I can prove it to you from your Bible. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Huh? No, the devil cannot deceive. Oh, devil cannot deceive you. Why? Because I believe in Christ, the Lord Jesus. You do not know the sign of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. You do not know the Bible. How do you believe in Jesus Christ? I love Jesus Christ more than you. Do you know that? So who's a better believer in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? You or me? A person who follows the commandment of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is a better believer or a person who does not? I think we are going apart from the question. I'm not going can... apart. The devil is deceiving you. I want to take the devil away from you. The devil is saying, don't answer. If you answer, you'll get caught. If you answer, then you'll get close to the truth. Now, who's a better Christian, Mike Winger or Dr. Uh, Zekira Narik, who actually follows the words of Jesus? Well, it's obvious. It's obvious Mike Winger has um, <clears throat> a blockage in Mike Winger's Mike Winger's refusal to study the truth and to know the truth is because of his own his own blindness and his own his own pride. If Mike Winger would actually open himself to Allah and study the Quran, he would become a Muslim. Now, in in the last question answer period, uh, Doctor uh, Zakir, sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name, Na Naik. Um, He's a very good teacher. He's very entertaining. Now, I, when I say he's a good teacher and entertaining, the, like I mean that sincerely. I, it, it, he's interesting to listen to. It doesn't mean that I believe what he has to say. And I, now, I also think uh, Rabbi Tobias Singer is. A, I think he's a. He's a. I, I think both of these guys are well intentioned and they're good teachers and they're good speakers. Um, and I, and I and the part of the reason that I use Mike Winger as an example is I also think he's well spoken. You know, he's a handsome Southern California white guy with with credentials. And and I don't think any of these people are, you know, like I don't I don't think they're sociopath evil people that know they're deceiving people. I I just think that they've all they they all have the same thing in common in that, in that they grew up or came into a worldview and then as they studied they studied to continually reinforce the view that they've already accepted so in that last exchange of questions he says look the sign of jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale jesus spent three days and three nights well not really the bible's wrong about that he spent two nights and part of one whole day on saturday part of sunday part of friday so what Christians do is they say, oh, this part of the prophecy applies to Jesus, but this other part that we don't, that doesn't fit, we don't like that. So what the, what the Muslim teacher here is saying, look, was, was Jonah alive or dead when he was thrown over the boat? Obvious answer, which the Christian in that case didn't want to answer for the reason that the, the teacher said is you don't want to answer because you know you're going to be caught. Jonah was obviously alive when they threw him over the boat, and he stayed alive. He was never killed. So the sign of Jonah, if Jesus is to match the sign of Jonah, then we know the crucifixion didn't happen. You know, he maybe he went three days into Hades, but he was never crucified and never killed by the Jews. Um, voila. Now, I'm not saying to obviously become a Muslim. What I'm saying is, is just exchange what Mike Winger says with, with a good Hindu teacher or a good Muslim teacher, and you just have to pick out a few words and exchange a slightly different word, and there you go. You have the same message, but a complete different conclusion. Krishna is God. Allah is God. Jesus is God. So, but then does that mean that there are non-believers who are, they genuinely want God, they just want to seek the Lord with all their hearts and Satan's blinding them. And so they're, they're here's a, here's better than a non-resistant non-believer. They're actually pursuing God, but they can't find him because Satan's blocking it. Um, I think that the answer here biblically is those who seek him will find him. If you honestly seek Krishna and you read the, 
Bhagavad Gita's and you meditate and you pray, Krishna will reveal himself to you. There's no doubt about that. If you honestly seek Krishna and you honestly believe and you really want the truth and you're sincere, Krishna will speak to you and reveal himself to you. Now, if you honestly want to know the truth about Allah and you accept that Muhammad, peace be upon him, let's just say you accept he might be a prophet of God. You're not sure. If you honestly in your heart say to Allah, I want to know, I want to know the truth. I, I want to follow you if you're true, Allah. Allah will reveal himself to you. We have this testimony by billions of Muslims and Hindus. They will reveal themselves to you. Christians, do you see how this game's played? Do you see how this game's played? If you accept Mike Winger's testimony and you disregard the very sincere and very intelligent Muslims and Hindus I've presented little clips for or that you can find on YouTube, you are a racist bigot. Maybe not a racist, but for sure a bigot. Probably a racist bigot. Why? Because you're dismissing people for illogical reasons. Have you read the Quran? Have you prayed? that Allah would reveal himself? Have you honestly done that? You know, and I could say the same thing about Mormonism. Have you read the Book of Mormon and have you asked God to reveal himself and to speak to you? Because if you ask the Muslims, excuse me, if you ask the Mormons, did you have a burning in your bosom? Did God testify to the truth of the Book of Mormon? They will say yes. Are you saying these all these Mormons are deceptive, you know, psychopaths and that they all know it's a lie, but they're all out there, you know, going door to door or, you know, stop. Think about what you're saying here. Think about the special pleading that you're making. Think about what you think about how ridiculous ridiculous it is to say when everyone else on the planet when every other religion or every other true seeker seeks God genuinely with their heart in the right place and their mind really using critical thought and really wanting God, that they all get the wrong answer for whatever reason. Their stubbornness, their pride, their blindness, or Satan. But you, you sitting in Ohio going to your white church with your white pastor who went to an American evangelical seminary or Christian Bible school, he and you have the truth. Come on, be honest and quit being a bigot. If you think you have the truth, if you think that you that, that God's speaking to you and revealing the truth to you, but not to those brown people in India, you are a fucking racist and a fucking bigot. And it's disgusting. And excuse my language, but this is really, 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 really disgusting. Do you honestly believe in a loving God that would allow billions of young Indian children, and not just Indian, but all around the world, to be deceived by their loving parents about Krishna and Vishnu? And the same goes for you know, Muhammad and in Allah, do you really believe that your loving God would allow billions of Muslims to be deceived by Satan? Why? Because they're not white Americans that were raised in Ohio? Are you freaking kidding me? But, no, be honest here and really evaluate what you're saying. Because what you're saying is, is cruel. It's dehuman, dehumanizing. It's ugly. And it's illogical. If God is a loving God who wants his message revealed, then how could it possibly be that the landscape is filled with all these competing claims? Is Rabbi Tobias Singer a mean, rotten? He's a Jew, obviously. <laughs> he's a Jew. We know the Jews are Christ killers, God killers, the Jews. 
Do you, do you really want to say that? And if you don't say that, if you're not a fucking bigot and a racist, then you have to admit that the rabbis know the Tanakh better than you and better than your pastor. And maybe you ought to be a Jew. And if you believe that the Jews, the Abrahamic God had different later revelations, that Paul is that Paul's revelation is more important than Moses or the prophets, then why not investigate Muhammad's claims? And if if you just say if you just dismiss the Quran and that you're just a bigot. Now, I'm not saying I believe these things are true. I'm not saying I think Hinduism is true. But Hinduism has a long history and a Hinduism has its apologists and Hinduism has its miracles and Hinduism has all the same types of claims as, as Christians and as Muslims. So when you listen to Mike Winger here, you either, A, you have to dismiss everything he says. It's just complete bullshit. Or you have to land on the fact that white Americans who grew up in the Christian church are loved by Jesus and Jesus hates everybody else and wants everybody else to go to hell or be deceived. And he just allow, he allows he allows Satan to just blind him. Because what Mike's saying here is he's saying, hey, atheist, if you really, if the, the whole universe testifies to the existence of God. And if you really pray to God, he will, he will show you that Christianity is true. Mr. Atheist, you shouldn't be an atheist. But what he's not saying is that if you if you genuinely seek God, that He will reveal the Quran is His 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 word, and that all, and you know Allah is God, and Muhammad peace be upon him is His prophet. Mike won't say that. Why? Because he's a bigot. He has to be, because he's dismissing a billion some people, and he's saying their experience isn't genuine, or worse, he's saying God wants those. Billions of Muslims and Hindus to go to hell and be deceived. That I mean, I don't know which one's worse. I think, I think uh, saying God wants all these people to be deceived is is maybe worse than saying that they're just all prideful and ignorant. Come on, can you guys be honest? Because if you're honest, you got to realize this is all of these claims are based on man all of these claims are man-made and everybody that says that god testified in their heart is feeling a chemical reaction in their brain that's common to everybody and it obviously you have to agree that most people that feel that are deceived and if you say but not me then you're just an arrogant fuck don't be that don't be arrogant don't be a racist don't be a bigot Admit these things are culturally driven. Be honest. That at some point, God is going to reveal himself to them and they need to continue seeking him. Non-Christians are not going to be satisfied with that, most likely. A lot of them anyways aren't. They're going to find it offensive. It shouldn't be offensive to them. Like, It's not offensive, Mike. It's just silly. Because your arguments are circular, and they're the same arguments everyone else is making. If you just read the Book of Mormon, and you just pray to God, he will reveal the Book of Mormon's true, and Joseph Smith is his prophet. If you just are honest, Mike Winger, and you seek Allah, and you read the Quran, and you and you look to the the last and the most you know the most recent true prophet. Muhammad, peace be upon him, you will become a Muslim. It's obvious. It's obvious. So what you're saying is not offensive. It's just, it's silly, it's special pleading, and at the end of the day, it's culturally, it's cultural bigotry. And it needs to stop, really. Grow up. It's 2024. They believe people around the world are deceived about all kinds of things. There's nothing surprising about thinking that I can be deceived about something, too. Yes, Mike Winger, I could be deceived. There could be a creator God. So the question is, what methodology do you use? And you can't use a methodology that it's circular. And you can't use a methodology that says, well, just read this holy book and do what it says, because this holy book says it's true. That's circular. And you can't say, 
if you're honest, if you're an honest seeker and you honestly seek God and ask him, he will reveal it to you because that's what everyone says. So there has to be a better methodology, a fair methodology. And I contend if you do that, you will land at the place where you will see that the universe could have been a product of natural process and that there's no God and that atheism is completely reasonable. Or you might land on the place, if you reject that, you might land on the place that there is some creator designer and it might be a super intelligent AI and we might live in a construct or a virtual world. That's a possibility too. And it might also be a possibility that there's a DS God, like a, a supernatural being that made this universe, like a Thomas Paine creator God. I mean, do, do we have evidence of that? I don't, you know, I don't think so, but... It, is it logically possible? Sure. But once you start saying that this prophet, whether it's Joseph Smith or Muhammad or Paul or what, you know, whoever, and once you start saying they have a special, a special unique message that's the true message, and if you'll just open your heart and mind to it, God will reveal. Then you're just saying the same thing everybody else says who is either deceived or a charlatan or a sincere believer like you that just grew up in that environment and can't see the water because he's a fish. If there is a real God, if Christianity is true, it's at least encouraging to think that if I continue pursuing God, that I will find him. If Mormonism is true, it's very encouraging to know that if you continue to seek, you will... you. God will reveal that Mormonism is true. It, you know what? It's very encouraging to know that Allah loves you. And if you seek Allah and you read the Quran and you pray to Allah, he will reveal himself to you. We have this testimony from billions. And it's it's also very encouraging to know that if you that if if Hinduism is true and you seek the truth, that Krishna will reveal himself to you. That's all very encouraging. You get it? Don't special plead, because when you special plead, you make yourself out to be an arrogant jerk. And if you don't special plead, how do you, how do you determine which one of these claims is true? But I think my biases are well established. Of course you do. Everybody does. That's the nature of the kind of self-deception and biases that we, we all can experience. Exactly, Mike Winger. Now, won't you join me in, in a prayer to Allah right now so that he can come in and help you get out of this cult that you're in? Oh, wait a minute. I just got a new message. Vishnu and Krishna would like you to drop your, your cultural American bias and your Christianity that you received as a child and accept the reality and you could know it's true if you drop your bias in or you're honest or or no are mike wingers his biases are the good ones like do you see all the projection going on here and the gaslighting and the lies the special pleading and the double standards you guys get it are you are you getting it if you're a christian and you actually care about the truth, I am not saying to you, become an atheist. I'm not saying to you, reject Christianity. I'm not, I'm not making those kind of claims. But what I am saying is you can't pray to God to reveal the truth and expect a valid answer. And you can't just look at your holy book and expect a valid answer because that's what everyone does. You have to do, you have to find a truly unbiased methodology. And you have to start with no preconceptions, no precepts. If you have precepts, if you go into the conversation, I know there's a God and I know it's the Abrahamic God. I know that I know that I know. If you start there, you've just, all you've done is you've created a barrier to knowledge because you, that's what the other guys are saying. So again, either you're special and God loves white Americans from Ohio more than anyone else, or you're not going about this in a fair way, and, you're, and your critical thinking is a joke, and you're, 
and you're thinking that you're not biased, but everybody else is biased is just wrong. And it's a form of bigotry and it's, and it's, it's just not fair. Like if you want to believe that, fine, just say, Hey, look, I believe God loves white Americans more than any other person. And you know, whatever, be a Calvinist and be happy with everybody else is going to hell and be happy with that. Like, I, I find that quite disgusting, but if that's where you land, but don't try to tell me you're a critical thinker and that you believe that you've given this a fair shake because that's just nonsense. Be honest. I know this is really offensive to people. I get that. And I try to avoid that offense if possible, but it shouldn't actually be offensive. It's just an analysis of if Christianity is true, then your non-belief is not merely a result of the evidence. It's also a result of a uh, spiritual battle that's going on, a result of your own biases against God and against truly following him. And one thing you can ask is, would you, if you came to believe right now that Christianity was true, would you worship God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Would you love God? Would you, would you embrace Christianity? W would you be able to sing worship songs to the Lord in, in a, because of his love and goodness? And if the answer is like, oh, well, I don't know, then you see that, yeah, so there is a bias that's there that's being revealed in that moment. Mike Winger, if you, if you were to acknowledge that Allah was God and the Quran is the only holy book that's, that's truly true and truly reveals God's intention and instructions for humanity, would you praise Allah? Would you say, Allah Akbar, and pray to, towards Mecca five times a day and follow the dietary requirements and so forth? And if your answer, Mike Winger, is no, well, then that's not, then the tr it's not the truth isn't the problem. The, the problem is that there's a barrier in your heart. Do you see how this game's played, Christians? Just put, er, just take everything that Mike says and imagine it's be, being said by a Muslim or a Hindu or a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness or a holy... A, oneness pentecostal at any rate I, I i think this is all more encouraging than a lot of people think it is because it would mean that if you do seek god you can find him continue seeking the lord continue seeking after god continue praying lord you know search my heart god see my biases see my my whatever i have going on god it may, maybe you have to pray this way god if you're real because i am just don't know what to think then help me see through my own issues Help me seek and find you. Help me work through these biases. Help open my eyes and keep pursuing and seeking God. But here, here's the weird thing. People are psychologically complex and we justify things so fast. It could be your only, I'm not saying this is the case, but it's possible, right? You guys, you guys know humans, you know you. It's possible you could pray that prayer purely as a way of justifying yourself. It's possible, Mike Winger, that you could pray to Allah or to Krishna purely to justify yourself to reject those religions. So you have to pray to Allah with a clean motivation. You have to read the Quran and meditate on the scriptures. And you have to be completely open and honest to it. And you have to acknowledge that you could be wrong. And if you spend the time to do that, you will become a Muslim. It's obvious. That's what happens. That's what happens when people do that. They become Muslims. Now, Mike Winger, if you if you really want to know the truth and you've admitted that humans have bias and you've admitted that we're, you know, that we're complex, psychologically complex, you've admitted that. So if you really want to know the truth, that now I'm not saying you have to travel to India, but if you could, it would be more helpful. But you you put yourself among some knowledgeable Hindus and meditate and read the vedas and ask you know pray that that the universe will reveal the truth to you and then you'll have a personal relationship with krishna and then you'll know do you see how do you see how that works i hope you see how this works i hope christian that you could see that looking from the outside the the way 
So look, I might be wrong about being an atheist, but I'm not wrong about my um and by how I'm analyzing how all of you different religions talk because you all say the same thing. You all say my God's the right God and my holy book is the right holy book. And that if you're truly seeking my God, he, my God will reveal himself to you. And if you're truly honest, my holy book will reveal that it's true. And if you deny that, you're just denying what is plain and obvious. Because that's how the game's played. Well, I spent three months going to church, praying, worship, doing worship songs, and, and asking God to reveal himself to me. But maybe the reason why you did this was as a way of validating yourself, not as a way of pursuing God. We are just complicated people. Three months? Be honest, Christian. Have you spent three minutes, three minutes praying to Allah and contemplating the Quran and the truth of Islam? Even three minutes, much less three days or three weeks or three months. Have you spent three minutes studying Buddhism? Have you spent three months studying Hinduism or even three weeks or even three days? Now, I'm sure there's some out there that have, but by and large, most Christians have not. So why is it, Mike, that, that you're saying people go to church for three months to Christian church to justify their rejection of God. But then you don't recommend everybody spend three months at all the other religions and all the other churches. And you could say the same thing, not just about Islam or Hinduism. You could say the same thing about Catholicism. Have you Christians spent three months going to a Catholic church and going through the ca the Catholic rituals or study going to the catechism or anything like that and if you have it how do you reject catholicism just because your pastor told you you see how biased that is now have you studied calvinism have you studied what the win oneness pentecostals or the assemblies of god or the baptists or the methodists have you gone to all of those church and spent three or four months really contemplating the truth claims of the anglicans the southern baptists Come on. So obviously that method is not like Mike wants you to use this method for his religion. But I don't see him. T I don't see him encouraging you to use it for all the other religions. And, you know, Frank, let's be honest here. Who would have the time to do that? So if that's if that's not a good method, like if you, if you can't say to yourself, God, I I honestly want to seek you, God. So I need to spend three months at, you know, at least 10 different Christian denominations. I need to spend ten, three months with the Shiites, three months with the Sunnis, uh, three months with the Hare Krishnas, three months with like the more mainline conservative Hindus and three months with the Buddhist and three months with the Shintus. And, you know, come on, that, that that's not practical, right? So if that methodology doesn't work, then we need, a, we need a fair, unbiased methodology. Now, I say if you use that, you'll, you'll become at least like an agnostic about things and probably an agnostic atheist. But I'm not, ask, I'm not asking you to believe that or even do that. And what I'm asking you is to think about the methodology. Think about the, think about the way that you could study these things unbiased. So at the end of the day, you can say, hey, look, I was honest and I landed on this conclusion because I did, I used a good methodology that was what that was as free as possible from biases, cultural influences, and guys like Mike Winger. All I can encourage people to do is keep seeking the Lord, pursue God. Don't just do it so you can tell a story to other people about how I'm a non-resistant non-believer. Look at my story about how I and and you know maybe validating myself was my goal there. Um, All I can encourage you, friends is to keep seeking for the real God. And don't do it just so you can justify yourself that you that you tried a little bit. Do it so that you can truly seek the real God, the real Lord. So to do this, you're going to have to study all these other claims. You can't just land on Mike's God. If you, if you think Mike has the right version, why? And if you're willing to admit that maybe where you were born or the culture you are surrounded with might not be the 100% true right one, that once you're willing to admit that, and it doesn't have to be going from Christianity to Islam, it could be going from Protestant to Catholicism. The minute 
the minute you admit that you don't have all the answers and that you need a good method, then, my friend, you're on the right path. And you're on the right path of deconstruction. And I highly recommend deconstruction. And I don't mean it just so you'll be an atheist. I don't mean it so you'll end up thinking like me. I don't, I'm not asking you to think like me. I'm asking you to think with critical thinking with good methodologies. And I don't even know if I have the best methodologies. If you have some ideas on non-biased, better methodologies than Socratic questions, Socratic method, scientific method, Bayesian logic, and starting without presuppositions, well, please leave me a comment in the comments about where, like, what's a better way to know something. All right, that's it for this one. Uh, as usual, it went a little long. I try to cut out some of my rambling, but some of this stuff is so important and it just gets me worked up. Please forgive me. Please share, like, subscribe. I'm still a baby channel. I'm trying to get, you know, trying to get the message out there. All right, thank you.